Well, hello, I'm Juliana Vita. I am the Chief Technical Advisor for the Public Sector at Splunk. And I am very thrilled today to be joined by Chris Taylor, who is the Vice President, Digital Accelerator at Airbus. Chris, would you just want to say hi and introduce yourself and then we can get started? Hi, Juliana. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting me here today to, to have this fireside chat. A very impressive background in aerospace, and it's personally very interesting to me because I'm a retired Navy helicopter pilot myself. So having an opportunity to speak with you about how you're bringing data to everything in the aerospace industry is particularly satisfying and interesting for me. So let's just jump in. And could you just tell us about Airbus and your particular role? What exactly is the Digital Accelerator Program? The Digital Accelerator Program, and it's actually an organization, was set up to achieve and support uh, Airbus's digital, some of the Airbus's digital transformation initiatives. And the business objectives were really quite simple. Faster time to market, lower cost, ability to adapt to new innovation or customer opportunities, and to do that on a global basis. And so my organization was set up about three and a half years ago to help and enable that change in capability. Wow, it sounds like uh, quite a lot of work that you have on your hands and a, and a big program that you started and it's, it's pretty exciting, especially the, the, the global scope of it. Um, and as you develop the data strategy specifically around that, let's talk about that for a second, and shifted to the cloud, what were the guiding principles that you, that you kept in front of yourself and in front of your team? And what did you look for specifically in the data platform piece of it? Sure, I think you, you have to take a step back. A data strategy has a business purpose. And the business purpose is to uh, create value for customers, employees, or suppliers, and enable them to make faster, better decisions to drive business performance. That is the business objective. And so to do that, you need Typically at the scale of Airbus, you need a large global enterprise platform that can be self-service that enables democratization of the center of truth of data and people to can consume that because the value is not created by the platform. The value is created by people making faster, better decisions. We wanted to have a single enterprise data fusion platform because the value is accelerated and magnified when you integrate the data together. You break the data silos you also, by breaking the data silos, help to break the cultural and organizational silos that exist. And therefore, especially with digital transformation, the value of digital transformation is about joining the dots across the organization. And so Splunk enables us to join the dots. Typically, people will use Splunk for IT operations or cybersecurity or whatever. They'll choose different instances of that platform. We took a unique approach at Airbus. We chose one platform to deliver many business segments of value. So we chose IT operations, we've analyzed business processes, we use it for running and helping IT as a business, but we also use it for cybersecurity. But not just security operations, but for compliance, for data-driven decision-making, and, and freeing the data out for the organization to use rather than the silos. That sounds really interesting and about how you're using the, what your data strategy is essentially. Um, but what I'd like to talk about, this is something that is personally interesting to me and I like to talk to senior leaders like yourself about, and that's the people aspect. You know, it's easy sure. to get stuck on, not stuck on, but it's easy to get um, focused on the technology, the data, the, the technology pieces, and often put the people and culture issues to the side. So could you talk about your team a little bit and what benefits did you realize by empowering your team with not only data and data insights for the sake, but leveraging the data to take action so that they could Correct. take action for themselves and for their jobs. And what did you unearth there? It's, it's actually part of uh, the operating model and the cultural change. When you move to a product and services operating model, each product has a clear value description, clear roadmap, clear investment roadmap, clear um, cost roadmap. And so people are accountable for demonstrating the value. Now you need to demonstrate the value first of all by adoption and then business value, okay? And we want people to be able to to, to show the value and adoption of their products or potentially if their products are not being used. And so to help people do that, you've got to give them the tools to do the job. Simple as that. And, and Splunk is one of our key enterprise tools. And we've got several that enable our products and services to demonstrate adoption and value. 
uh, of how those of the performance of those products. We also use it for IT operations. We also use it for a multitude of different topics. Managing waste in an IT environment, running IT as a business, key topic. Uh, always, but obviously even more of a key topic in a, an environment such as COVID and, and uh, aircraft manufacturing. So Splunk enables our teams to look at waste. You know, what about our assets? Where are our stranded assets? Where are underutilized assets? And so it really is used for many, many use cases. And very early on, we realized that actually one platform with the data integrated can solve for many use cases and many products and help those products to run their products as a business, manage value, manage cost, manage waste. Yeah, thanks. There was so much great stuff in there. Um, two things I, that really struck me, and that was the issue of accountability, holding teams accountable, and also that, that topic of waste. Um, you may have heard at, at Splunk, we call it dark data, you know, the data that's flowing across your environment that you just aren't leveraging you know, to your best advantage. So I like to hear that that's part of your strategy as well, is to manage that waste throughout the, throughout the organization and the enterprise. I think it's actually, you have to encourage people as a leader to be curious, okay? You're looking for people who are curious to go, ah, that's a great idea. This is suddenly what we can do with this data. This is how we can join the dots across the organization to make a better decision. And so, you know, we've encouraged people and talent who are data curious uh, and given them access to the platform and free access to generate insights for us around wastage, around cybersecurity, around operations and so on and so forth. The hardest thing is actually is, is encouraging people uh, to use it and to do it. And you have to take away the barriers to it. So the barriers to entry are training, are access, are discovery of the data. And once you remove those barriers, then you start to get the value and then you start to get the tool adoption. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the concept of curiosity is so important. I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Um, have you found that as you've driven that as a, as a guiding principle or as, a, as, as something that's important to you is, is driving curiosity, do you find people from across Airbus and other business units that then show an interest in yours or say, hey, this data stuff is really interesting. I'd like to learn more about it. Well, I think, I think the very first thing is you need to overcome the the, the data in silos, okay? So data exists in silos. And that is very suboptimal for value. And people like it in silos because they control it and manage it. But then what you need to do is open up their, their minds and their eyes to actually that data is far more valuable if it's shared and integrated with other data in the organization. And that's the big value gear. It gears up the value so that people can actually then start to join the dots. Now, classic example is actually cybersecurity. Um, cybersecurity is a, is a business risk managed by collaboration across the enterprise. I cannot think of any cyber risk that is purely dependent on one control only. It's not the case. It doesn't exist. And so it's actually about the combination of controls. It's actually about teams collaborating together and prioritizing and analyzing the data that you get control management and risk management. I'm not saying risk reduction, but risk management. And so, you know, cybersecurity is a great example where joining the dots across the organization, breaking the silos, and having a single version of the data referential of just your cybersecurity environment is incredibly important. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And um, especially now in this pandemic that we're going through with the expansion of just more threat vectors, more people having access to networks and applications, I would imagine that the, the cybersecurity concerns are just growing exponentially daily but as well. You make, you make a great point. And we, um, we saw in Airbus a change in people's behavior due to COVID, okay? So classically people worked from home, but they also consumed services and data and the data risk changed. Um, so we analyzed that around 10 key dimensions in Splunk. And we used it to identify the, and, and measure the changing risk in our, our environment. We then used that very same data to reprioritize our investments and, and put in place new cybersecurity controls um, due to COVID to manage that changing cyber risk. And this is really about devices spending a long time working from home effectively. Uh, and then what we did was we used that to make investments about how we manage the risk of re-onboarding those devices uh, into Airbus. And all of that was identified, prioritized, and measured the outcome and the benefits of with Splunk. Well, Chris, as a leader in data in general, 
digital transformation and acceleration. It would be great if you could share some of your thoughts with your peers, CIOs and CTOs and uh, VPs of, of digital acceleration and other companies about from the human side, digging more into the people side, what tips mm. do you have for others that are just maybe not as far as you are in your maturity journey? Well, I think in terms of digital transformation, there are two key sets of stakeholders and you have to answer the question, what's in it for me? Okay, so if I'm a business leader, what's digital transformation gonna do for me? What can it enable for me in terms of incremental revenue, faster time to market, what can it do for me? Because digital transformation can often be uh, very technically focused and you need to turn it into a business context and explain it into the business value. Many people just think cloud is infrastructure and, and, and get lost when cloud is discussed. So the reality is the trick of digital transformation is explaining cloud in the context of business enablement. And typically something, you couldn't do this before, but now you can do it. It was four months, it's now one day. So here's a great, a really simple example. And the thing is, is not to talk about technology. That's rule number one. It's to talk about outcomes. Um, and so when I worked at Qantas, we used to, and you know, to go and fly a route, a new route. And so what we did was, well, we didn't, we wanted to, to find a marketing use case, okay? And a way to tell the value of cloud or digital transformation to non technologists. And so we took this application that was running for four months and we put it on the public cloud and it ran in three hours. Okay. And the business outcome of that, well, that's, that's, that's a useful business outcome for a start. The real business outcome was we had A380s that we weren't flying and we wanted to fly them on look what routes so we could fly them. And so suddenly we ended up analyzing Sydney to Vancouver to do the ski season. Okay. So the, by the time you normally take the decision to do that or analyze that, because it's four months, you've missed the business opportunity because you can't go fly straight away. You have to do the crew rostering and everything else. And so suddenly cloud computing enabled us to do a whole new route that we couldn't do before um, and to basically manage distress cap capacity in the aircraft that we wanted to make money out of. And that's huge for the airline. The second stakeholder is, What's in it for me uh, in terms of being an employee? And uh, what am I going to get out of it? Um, is it more work? Is it less work? Is it going to upskill me? What new capabilities am I going to enjoy it? You know, so the reality is you need to think about those stakeholders and sell it to those individuals um, so that it really is of benefit to them. And once you've achieved that and you work back from there, then digital transformation becomes far easier. Thanks, Chris. Clearly from our conversation, you're, you are standing out as a, uh, as a leader, as a visionary in the data space. Um, Airbus is, is fairly mature, has already matured in its cloud journey, but not all organizations have. So could you give us some thoughts on where, how you think other organizations can crack this cloud transformation and how they can get the most value? Well, I think cloud transformations are um, quite a difficult journey. So the first part is, you know, we obviously have a, a big cloud, public cloud platform. Um, and the really the first thing that you really need to do is solve security by design in that platform to take ever increasing more sophisticated and more relevant workloads in it. And so you need to solve that prob problem. And that takes quite a lot of effort to be able to do it at scale. The thing about cloud is you can build it for one application or two applications, but building it for a global enterprise is quite a different challenge when you want to consume it in a de democratized way. And so Airbus has invested in that over uh, the last two and a half, three years. And now we are in starting to pull more and more applications in, and workloads from on-premise into the public cloud. It is a challenge, but there are, you get the, for us, the focus was originally the customer experience and scaling and innovation ability. But now we're moving to looking at uh, existing workloads that are on premise and moving them to the public cloud for cost saving opportunities. Okay, so that's us. But we're also quite mature in the digital workplace uh, in terms of public cloud. And so a lot of our digital workplace and collaboration tools are all run in a cloud environment for one of the big cloud providers. And then that is an incredible ability. And it really um, came to the forefront during COVID because suddenly we had all these collaboration tools that enabled people to work completely differently at home, at scale, 
uh, without missing a heartbeat. So that was an incredible capability that we've deployed. Thanks for all of that. And I'd like to just kind of wrap up with, with one last question for you. And we always like to give some suggestions or action or next steps. So what are some things, maybe two or three things that you believe every company needs in order to thrive in the data age? Thriving in the data age is, is not about technology, okay? First of all, the hardest thing is convincing people what to do and that you should do it, invest in it. It's never easy, by the way. Uh, but really, it's about people and talent and culture. And um, that's what really, yeah, you know, is really the most challenging part uh, in convincing and influencing and identifying those people who really want to go and move and do it. That's the big challenge. The cultural uh, change uh, of, of digital transformation is by far the hardest part. The technology, you know what, you can go and you can buy it and, and deliver it and, and scale it. It's not easy, but not, not as nearly as difficult as the cultural change. Well, I could, I could talk to you about the applications of data and technology in the aerospace industry forever, but I, uh, I don't think that would be interesting to everyone else. So let's uh, go ahead and finish. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. And I hope I get to meet you in person someday after the world returns to normal. Thanks. <laughs> One day. Nice to meet you, Joanne. Take care. Have a good day.